This video is about galvanic cells. So galvanic cells are also uh, known as electrochemical cells. They're used to demonstrate the flow of electron from one species to another. And they're called electrochemical cells because they're changing chemical potential energy into electrical energy. It's basically how, how batteries work. So let's have a look at this complicated scenario here. This is a galvanic cell. It consists of two half cells, a salt bridge connecting the two half cells, an anode, a cathode, which are both electrodes, which are dipped into electrolyte solutions, and they're joined together with a wire so that the electrons can flow. Because remember, an electric circuit needs to be a complete circuit. And you can see here, if you follow it around, it creates a complete circuit. So we can get electricity flowing. And this is why the voltmeters here. If we have a look at this galvanic cell, you'll see that there is the anode, which is made of copper. And the reaction that's occurring at the copper is that the copper solid is disintegrating into, into copper 2 plus ions and 2 electrons. So electrons are being produced here at the anode and they're going around here till they get to the other electrode called the cathode. And I'll be explaining these terms in a minute, but I just want to give you an overall picture. So this cathode here is made of silver. So what's happening here is silver is going to be coming out of solution. So out of the silver nitrate, these are the silver... Um, ions that are coming out of solution, they're going to be reacting with the electrons that are coming down to form silver solid. So you get a build up of silver crystals here on the cathode. These two half equations here can be added together to get a full uh, redox reaction here. But we'll go through that in detail and step by step now. So the essential parts to the galvanic cell are the following. You need the two half cells. So here we have the two half cells. You need two electrodes, one of which is the anode, one of which is the cathode. You need an electrolyte, and both of the electrodes need to be sitting in some form of electrolyte. There needs to be a wire connecting the two electrodes, and there needs to be a salt bridge. So let's have a look at all of those things in detail. So two half cells, here they are here, and you'll be doing pracs like this in class. So you've got an oxidation half cell, and you've got a reduction half cell. Remember, oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons, and that's where the electrons come and move around. The contents of these half cells do not mix, and you can see here they're in separate beakers. They don't mix. Here are your electrodes. And here's your salt bridge, which is basically just a piece of filter paper which has been dipped in a salt solution. Okay, let's talk about the two electrodes that are needed. They need to be conducting, so they need to be made, they're generally made of a metal or of carbon, because remember carbon conducts electricity. So the anode. The anode is where oxidation occurs. Remember, oxidation is the loss of electrons. And you can see here in this reaction, copper is undergoing oxidation. So it's losing two electrons. This has a negative charge due to the generation here or the loss of electrons. The electrons are being generated and they move up out of the electrode. So this electrode will corrode, and that's what this picture is showing here, because what's basically happening is copper, this copper solid, is turning into copper iron. So it's going into the solution. So copper solid is no longer solid, it's ions, and the two electrons are whizzing up around the wire to the cathode, where reduction will occur. Okay, let's have a look at the cathode. Here we are, we have a silver cathode. This is where reduction occurs. This has a positive charge. And what happens here is you get a build-up of metal crystals. And the reason for that is you've got silver in solution, which is grabbing onto the electrons that's coming through. So silver plus an electron forms silver solid. 
And this is how you do um, silver plating. And if we get a chance, we'll uh, do that in class as well. So the electrons are coming down the wire from the oxidation reaction, and now reduction's occurring. So the silver in the solution is grabbing or grabbing onto that electron and forming solid silver. And you'll actually see that forming on the outside of the silver crystals. So we've got the anode, which is negative because it's producing electrons. This is where oxidation occurs. So the zinc here becomes zinc 2 plus and two electrons. Oxidation is occurring. Electrons are being produced. And that is the negative electrode called the anode. The cathode is the positive electrode. This is where the electrons are being accepted and the reduction reactions occurring. So here these copper are forming copper solid when the electrons meet up with it. So Cu2 plus comes out of solution, grabs on to the two electrons to form copper solid. You'll get a build up here of copper on this electrode. And there's our picture again. The way to remember this is an oil rig catch. Anode, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, occurs at the cathode. The third thing we need is the electrolyte. The electrolyte is the solution that the electrodes are sitting in. This contains ions that are free to move. And it's important because it will maintain the balance of charge in the half cells. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that here you have zinc solid forming zinc two positive ions. So here we have two positive ions coming into the solution. What will happen is that negative ions in the salt bridge will come into this solution because they'll be attracted because there's a positive charge forming in that solution due to the buildup of zinc two plus. It will the nitrate here will balance out that positive charge because you don't want to have a charged solution. On the other hand, on this side, what's happening is that copper in solution is forming copper solid. So you're losing positive from this solution. So the positive in the salt bridge, which in this case is potassium, will enter this solution to replace the copper that's being lost. So basically the salt bridge is just there to balance out the charges in the electrolytes. Fourth thing we need is a wire connecting the two. And that's all we basically need. And here it shows the light bulb because there's electricity or electrons passing through that. And it's just for the electrons to move. Okay, and the last thing which I've already pretty much spoken about is the salt bridge that's needed. So you've got a salt bridge that can be made up of, it's generally something like potassium nitrate. Um, something that's not going to be reactive, it's not going to form any sort of ionic solids or anything like that. What the salt bridge does, it completes the circuit and it provides electrical neutrality. And that's what I was talking about before. You're compensating for ions that are lost or gained during the redox reaction. So here we've got a copper electrode. And what's happening here is that you've got extra copper ions that are being formed at the electrode surface. So copper ions are being formed when this copper electrode disintegrates. So what's going to happen here to balance out that positive charge, you're going to have negative charge migrating down the salt bridge to balance out that charge. And in this case, it's nitrate. So when drawing a galvanic cell, you must include the direction of the current flow along the wire, the direction of the flow of the anions and cations in the salt bridge. The anode and the cathode must be labelled. The signs of the electrodes, positive or negative, must be labelled. The material from which each electrode is made of must be labelled. The electrolyte in each of the half cells and the half equations must be written. And the overall redox reaction. So here's an example of a question you might get. 
Draw a galvanic cell that has a half cell of a zinc strip immersed in zinc chloride and another half cell with copper immersed in copper nitrate. The salt bridge has potassium nitrate in it. The zinc half cell is the oxidation half cell. So let's break the question down and look at the important points. The first thing it's telling you is that there's a zinc strip immersed in zinc chloride and that the zinc half cell is the oxidation half cell. So we can draw that. We've got a piece of solid zinc in a solution of zinc chloride. The other half cell has copper immersed in copper nitrate, so we can draw that as well. Here's our copper electrode immersed in copper nitrate solution. And the last bit of information is that the salt bridge has potassium nitrate in it. So here's our salt bridge connecting the two half cells with potassium nitrate. The zinc cell is the oxidation half cell. So we've got oxidation half cell is zinc going to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. So the zinc here is coming off the electrode from solid and forming more Zn2 plus ions. The reduction half cell therefore has to be the copper 2 plus coming out of solution and forming solid copper metal. From here it's now quite easy. The electrons are being produced here. We draw the electron flow, so they will go in this direction. It's important to indicate the direction flow. And they will go towards the copper, because copper is receiving electrons. This therefore becomes the negative electrode, because electrons are being produced, which is the anode. A negative oxidation. This will make this the positive electrode because it's receiving electrons. Remember, negative is attracted to positive, so this is the cathode. The last thing we need to do is establish which direction these ions are going in the salt bridge. So, here in this half cell here, we're losing positive charge. We need to replace that positive charge with positive ions. So the potassium ions will move into this half cell. Here, we're getting excess positives here. These need to be balanced out with a negative charge, so the nitrate will move into this solution. And to find our overall net equation, we just add these two equations together, making sure the electrons balance out. So there's two electrons on the oxidation side, two electrons on the reduction side. These balance out so we can just add these equations together to get our final overall equation. So question sevens in your notes, have a go at this. Uh, read through the question carefully, it tells you everything that you need to include here and see if you can draw the galvanic cell. Pause the video, have a go and I'll run through a work solution with you. So here's the fully drawn galvanic cell. First thing we've got is the oxidation half cell which is magnesium solid going to Mg2 plus plus two electrons and the reduction half cell, which are lead ions plus two electrons going to lead solid. This gives us an overall redox reaction of magnesium solid plus lead ions forming lead solid and magnesium ions. The mag magnesium is the negative electrode because it's forming electrons. So this is called the anode. The lead is accepting the electrons, so it's the positive electrode called the cathode. You must make sure you've got the direction of the electrons clearly marked. You must also make sure that you've got the direction of the electrolyte from the salt bridge. So the potassium will be moving into the lead nitrate and the nitrate ions will be moving into the magnesium nitrate. If you've gotten that correct, you don't have to watch any more of this video, otherwise the work solution to this step-by-step um, -step is next. So the first thing to look at is what the half cells are containing. They've got lead and magnesium electrodes dipped into appropriate nitrate solutions. 
the most appropriate nitrate solutions are magnesium nitrate and lead nitrate. Makes it nice and easy. We can connect these two with a salt bridge. Potassium nitrate is your best bet for that. So the next bit of information, the mass of the lead electrode had increased. The way in which the lead is going to increase is by this lead that's aqueous ions forming lead solid. And to do that, it needs to gain two electrons to form lead solid. The mass of the magnesium electrode had decreased. So what's happening now is that the solid magnesium are forming magnesium ions. So here's our half equation here, magnesium forming magnesium ions plus two electrons. This side here is losing electrons, so oxidation is lost, so this must be the oxidation half cell. This is gaining electrons, so this is the reduction half cell. From this point on, it's fairly simple. The electrons are being produced on this side, and they work their way around to the lead electrode. We must put in the direction of the electron flow. Electrons are being produced here, so it must be the negative electrode. So this is the anode. Remember, A negative oxidation is loss of electrons, an oil rig cat. On this side, it must be positive. It's accepting electrons. Electrons are being attracted to the positive, so this is the cathode. The last thing we need to figure out is the direction of the potassium nitrate or the salt bridge ions. Here we're losing positive out of solution, so potassium will move into solution to balance out that positive charge that's being lost. On this side, we've got excess positive being generated, so negative nitrate ions will move into that solution to balance out that charge. Our overall equation, we need to look at the number of electrons to make sure that these are equal. They are, so we can just add these two together. So we get an overall equation, which is magnesium solid plus lead ions form lead solid plus magnesium ions.